Today I am going to talk about the rapid sand filtration. In my previous session, I had discussed the slow sand filtration. The construction of rapid sand filters resembles to the slow sand filters certain extent. The features are like this: enclosure tank, filter medium backwashing arrangement and under drainage system. Here the enclosure tank. The enclosure tank is a smaller rectangular box. It can be placed under the roof because since it is smaller, generally the depth of this rectangular tank will be 2.5 to 3.5 meter. The surface area is around 20 to 50 square meter. L by B ratio shall be maintained 1.25 to 1.35. The filter media, generally the sand is used as a filter media here. The depth of the sand medium will be taken as 0.6 to 0.9 meter. The effective size of the sand will be taken as 0.45 mm. It should be in the range of 0.35 to 0.6 mm. The uniformity coefficient uh, is taken as 1.5, but generally it should be in the range of 1.2 to 1.7. What is that uniformity coefficient? This has already been discussed in my earlier session when I was talking about uh, slow sand filter. Once again, I will define here the uniformity coefficient is nothing but it is the ratio of sieve openings here the 60 percent of the sand is allowed to pass through the openings of the sieve is known as d60 similarly the sand 10 percent of the sand is allowed to pass through the openings of the uh, sieve is known as d10 this d60 divided by d10 or the ratio of d60 by d10 is taken as uniformity coefficient. That value should be in the range of 1.2 to 1.7. So estimated, estimation of the sand depth. The depth of the sand bed should be in such a way that the flocks should not break through the sand bed. So that can be calculated by Hudson's formula Q into DQ into H divided by L is equals to B I into 29323. This Q is nothing but filter rate in meter cube per meter square per hour and D is the size of, of the sand in mm, H is the terminal head loss and L is the depth of the sand bed and B I is nothing but the breakthrough index that value should be in the range of 4 into 10 to the power minus 4 to 4 into 6 into 10 to the power minus 3. Now we see the base material gravel. The base material gravel is used at a depth of 40 to 60 centimeter in three to four layers. The details are as shown below. The topmost layer of gravel will be laid at 15 centimeter thickness and size of that gravel is three to six mm. The intermediate level of gravel is laid again at a 15 centimeter thickness and 6 to 12 mm in size. Another intermediate layer of gravel is laid at 15 centimeter. The gravel size is 12 to 20 mm. The bottommost gravel, which is coarsest gravel, that is of 20 to 50 mm in size, will be laid for 15 centimeter depth. The estimation of gravel size uh, gradation. The gravel size gradation will be estimated by using this formula L equals to 2.54 into K log D. What is that K is a constant can be taken as 12 and D is nothing but gravel size in mm.
So under drainage system, now we can just look into this figure. Here you can observe at the bottom of this tank, a central pipe carrying the lateral pipes. Over the lateral pipes only, this gravel and as well as sand is laid. This is the cut section of the enclosure tank. The view of uh, lateral drain, you can just see here, this circular portion which you have seen here is nothing but this is the section of a central drain. On either side of the central drain, you can see this laterals are provided. Again, the laterals are provided with the stainers. The water percolating through the sand medium and passing through the gravel will be entering through the stainers to the lateral drain. Again, the lateral drain carry that water to the uh, longitude uh, central main drain. From the main drain, then water is to be taken to the clear water sump. That is how the filtration, filtered water is collected in the clear water sump. The operation of uh, sand filter. How the operation is done in sand filter? Here, there are so many holes. First, you look into the figure here, then you will come to know how that working will take place. If you look into this figure, here, there are so many holes, A, B, C, and D. A is the hole which allows the water from the clarifloculator. Then B is the wall which can allow the wa filtered water to flow out and that can be stored in a filter water sump or reservoir. Similarly, D is the hall where we can take out the dirty water or wash water. Through this one, it can be sent to the wash water drain. Another two hollows are this side. See here that hollow E and hollow F. That hollow F is carrying the compressed air. When it is kept open, the compressed air can be passed through. Similarly, uh, through wall E, we can pass the clear water from the overhead reservoir during the backwashing. So these figures which you are seeing here are known as a wash water traps, and this is the sand bed. Okay. So now we can see that how operation is going to be takes place. Just what are all the steps to be followed? First, uh, all holes are to be kept closed except the hole A and B. The hole A is open to permit the water from clarifier. Hole B is open to carry filter water to clear water sum. Then, a head of two meter over the sand bed is maintained for the proper filtration. Then, designed filter uh, rate of 3000 to 6000 liter per meter square per hour can be maintained. Then filter run depends on the quality of feed water. What is this filter run? Filter run, once if you start working of the filter, till the backwash, what is the amount of time taken in days or weeks, whatever it may be, that is known as a filter run period. If the quality of water is not good, the filter run period may less. If the quality of water is good, quite good enough, then filter run time may be quite longer enough. This is how the filter run period will be decided. So the filter run period may be from a day to several days also. So backwashing, how we have to go for a backwashing, we can see in subsequent slides. Backwashing. The filter backwash is very, very essential because as I told you, the sand bed or sand particles will just clogged by the presence of the mud particles, silt particles present in the water. Because of the accumulation of this mud particles and silt particles, this uh, top layer of the sand bed will form a mat. Because of that, there will be a, a head loss in the filter media. When the head loss reaches maximum limit, at that time we have to go for the backwashing, otherwise the filtration is not uh, uh, efficient. Therefore, 2 to 4% of uh, clean water is to be used for the backwashing. 
So how that backwashing is taking place, just uh, we'll see here. Just go through these two figures. Here, this first figure indicates the filtration process. The water is coming from the inlet chamber and it will be distributed over the sand medium. And through the sand medium, again, the water will percolate downwards. And after filtration, then that is coming out through the central drain and get accumulated in the clear water reservoir. But uh, here, in second case, it is opposite. The water will be passed backwards from the clear water reservoir. So during this case, the bed will be fluidized. What is that fluidized? The media is fluidized or bed is fluidized. What does it mean? The expansion of bed is taking place because uh, during the backwashing, the compressed air is passed to loosen the sand particles, grit particles, sticked over the uh, sand particles, flocculated particles, sticked over the sand grains. Those particles are loosened by passing the air. Similarly, once the water is also passed at a pressure, so the sand bed will increase in its depth, not only increasing its depth, the sand particles will start swirling. So because of that swirling action, the mud particles and the silt particles which are sticked over the sand particles will be washed away. Once that wa washing is done, then water will become very dirty. So that dirty water will be collected in this uh, wash water straps and from the wash water straps, it will be taken to the wastewater drain, then it will be sent to the sent to the drainage system. This is how the backwashing is taking place. So then what are all the halls are to be operated during the backwashing? That uh, what are the steps to be followed? Just let us see here. Just you have already seen the figure. There are so many halls which we can operate. When we have to operate all these walls, it is very, very important. Therefore, the skilled supervision is required here in uh, operation of this uh, rapid sand filter. The closing of wall A and B is very, very essential. If you go for a backwashing, then other walls which we have to keep it open is one first air wall. F is kept open. Through this one, the compressed air has to be passed at a rate of 1.5 meter cube per meter, per meter square per minute for about two to three minutes. As I told you, uh, for the swirling or for the fluidization of the sand bed, we have to pass the compressed air. So around two to three minutes, we have to pass the compressed air. After this process is over, then you stop that uh, hollow F, then open the hollow E. Through that, you have to allow the clear water or clean water from the reservoir through the under drainage system itself. So this water, will wash away the loosened materials, that is silt materials, and as well as flocculated materials which are present, that will be washed away. That wash water will be collected in the wash water trucks and it will be sent through the drains. So when we have to stop this washing, suppose if you observe the clear water on the sand bed, after a seven to eight minutes of time, you can just very well visualize the clear water then you can stop the valves F and uh, E. Then you have to just open the valve A and B slightly. Then uh, allow some amount of water. After that, fully you can open the valve A and B. Then you can put the uh, filter for the operation. This is known as backwashing. So coming to the troubles in the filter. These rapid sand filters generally will have some operational troubles. Air binding, the formation of mud ball, tracking and clogging of filter bed, sand leakage. What is this all about? Just we can go one by one, we can see that. The air binding, initially when the filter is commissioned, uh, the loss of head will be very, very less because the particle accumulation on the sand wires is very less. Once the time passes, the particles are accumulated more and more on the whites of the sand. Because of that, the, there will be a more head loss in the filter medium. The passing water will undergo more head loss. So to avoid that head loss, what will we have to do? Just let us see that. 
However, the loss of head goes on increasing. It will reach a stage where the top 10 to 15 centimeter uh, depth of the sand will not act. It will resist too much and bottommost portion of the sand bed will act as a hot comb. So the topmost layer, because which is offering much of resistance, vacuum will be created in the bottom. So that vacuum will suck the water. Due to this phenomena, the water will not uh, get filtered, then automatically just that will go without any filtration. This is known as air binding. And during this time, what will happen? The Whatever the dissolved gases present in the water will come out and stick to the sand particles. Therefore, the bubbling of this uh, uh, water is taking place. So that condition, if you observe, then you have to go for filter washing. That is the only solution to overcome this air binding. Next, coming to the formation of mud balls. What is this formation of mud ball? As I told you, the water will containing the turbidity, flock, and as well as a silt uh, and other materials. Suppose if it contains all this uh, particle, uh, all these uh, impurities, what will happen? The gelatinous flock and as well as sand particles and binders will put together form a ball. That ball will be around a peanut size, that is two to five centimeters in size. If these balls are not uh, taken care, not addressed properly, balls will go and occupy on the wides of the uh, sand medium. So thereby reduce the efficiency of the filter. Again, the clogging of filter will take place. Therefore, that is to be taken care properly. Next formation of uh, cracks in the filter bed. How this cracking is taking place? As I told you, the mat formation in due course of time, it takes place on the sand medium. If the accumulation of this uh, matter will be more and more, that the thickness of the mat formation will get increased. Because of this, the cracks will be developed near the walls of the enclosure tank. These cracks will totally stop the uniform distribution of the water through the medium. Therefore, the only water will start entering in through the cracks when these cracks are widened through so that again the proper filtration will not uh, take place. Therefore, these things can be overcome or avoided by means of washing the sand or otherwise uh, replacing the damaged sand or washing with caustic soda. All these uh, remedial measures we have to take to avoid the cracking the and as well as a mud uh, ball formation in the rapid sand filtration. Then sand leakage. What is that sand leakage? As I told you, during the back washing, we have to pass the compressed air and also we have to pass the clear water through the under drainage system. During this period, if the velocity of the water flow or compressed air is not regulated properly, the gravel material will be dislodged they will be get disturbed from their position. Due to the dislocation of this gravel uh, particles, what will happen? The sand will enter into the filtered water. Therefore, to avoid that one, we have to properly place the gravel on its place. This is how we can avoid the sand leakage. Thank you. If you have any question, you leave your comment. I can answer happily. Thank you.